Our first speaker is Alex Wong from the Scapins um, Eye Research Institute. He's a, um, an investigator there um, working on bioengineering and low vision rehabilitation, and he's going to talk to us today about stereoscopic 3D optic flow distortions caused by mismatches between image acquisition and display parameters. Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm honored to give a first talk, but I'm not sure how, uh, how I can perform this speech. But anyway, uh, this is all about the motion, and especially in depth, and 3D work. So, previously, we showed that the tightly coupled parameters between captured and displaying process, such as camera field of view and screen field of view, and camera separation and image separation, and camera convergence distance and screen distance, if they are not matched, those parameter mismatch will induce 3D space distortion. We formulated we uh, wait. Uh, we formulated. Wait. We formulated such distortion as a transformation function. <coughs> Sorry, as shown here. If anyone is interested in how it was derived, you may read our previous paper referenced below. Anyway, here I will show you how such 3D space distortion looks like using a cube. Let's assume that a cube is placed in a real or virtual world and the stereo camera is capturing the scene. If all the parameter pairs are matched, the viewer will see the cube with the same size, same shape, and at exactly the same location. Please remember that in following example, the original cube will be shown in brown and the reproduced one will be shown in purple. As you may, may also notice, the scenes are rendered in three-dimensional isometric projection so that the cube shape can be easily compared between two. So, okay, if the scene is captured by a 50-degree field of view camera and then displayed on a smaller field of view screen, as you can see, the reproduced one, the purple one, becomes smaller than the original cube, the brown one. If the contents is displayed on a larger screen, the reproduced cube becomes larger than it should be, and the space will be expanded. As mentioned before, these are shown in isometric projection, so the reproduction, pro, reproduced cubes are not cube anymore. Then what are they look like? As you can see, the distortion is hexahedron type space distortion, meaning that unlike the lens distortion, straight line will be remained as a straight. Also, the front and rear side rectangle remains as a square, and only the depth is affected, meaning that it breaks the natural depth to size relation. If you see it closely, you can also notice that if the 3D space is compressed, near front-facing square becomes larger than the far rear-facing square. And if the space is expanded, far square becomes larger than near square. So far, stereoscopic 3D space distortion were explained in a static viewing condition. That's a little bit boring. Then how does it look like if viewer is moving inside of this distorted space? In order to do that, to understand the effect of self-motion in viewer's perspective, first we need to know the concept of optic flow. Optic flow is a pattern of apparent motion caused by the relative motion between the observer and the scene, usually caused by observer moving inside of, inside of the static world, and each motion vector represents a um, point and in a perspective space and its velocity on the retina. As shown in the figure, it is often used for the egocentric motion analysis. In rigid world, <coughs> farther of, far object appears to move slower than near objects. And if the viewer moves faster, all object appears to move faster. 
However, the optic flow is fundamentally 2D representation of egocentric motion. So it has a limited ability to describe the motion in depth. Here is then an example of such limitation. If objects are shrinking or expanding while approaching to or moving away from the viewer, at the rate inverse, the, the, at the rate inverse of the rate uh, natural depth size change ratio, objects will take the same area in the uh, viewer's retina, and conventional optic flow diagram will show no motion at all. However, as we know, if something is moving, our, our uh, stereo depth cue will catch the motion and notify our brain that they are moving in depth direction. So in conventional optic flow diagram, 2D motion vectors are computed after the points in the 3D are projected to the viewer's 2D retina image plane. To include the depth motion in the optic flow analysis, 3D motion vectors should be computed before the point in the 3D world are projected to the viewer's image plane. I use the binocular, binocular, uh, the binocular fused, uh, the binocularly fused point in the stereoscopic world are geometrically estimated using the ray intersection method. To apply our 3D optic flow analysis, I will use a simple scene geometry to avoid the dimensional complication of the y direction and x direction change. As shown in the figure, objects are positioned on the left side of the wall along the depth direction, and they are positioned at viewer's eye level. And the viewer is assumed to move straight forward at one meter per second, two meter per second, three meter per second. This configuration eliminates any vertical motion, so we can just focus on the object's horizontal and depth motion. Notice that in this setup, far objects will be shown closer to the viewer's central field of view, which is zero eccentricity. So here are the results of the 3D optic flow, assuming that there is no spatial uh, distortion. In conventional optic flow expression, objects appear to move faster if viewer move faster, and far objects appear to move slower than near object, as expected. However, when we consider the stereoscopic 3D depth motion into the equation, it becomes much more interesting. Increasing viewer speed increases overall apparent object speed, as usual, but, but near objects appears to move slower than far objects. In fact, overall speed change becomes much uniform, regardless of object distance, if we consider the depth motion. Then why this happen? It is because the angular disparity and egocentric distance are related by the logarithmic reduction function, as shown in the plot. Farther distance has a smaller angular disparity, and for the same angular disparity change, the objects at farther distance make larger displacement compared to the near objects. When this logarithmic reduction function is combined with the linear perspective function, they will compensate each other and makes all approaching objects to be perceived at similar speed. Going back to the effect of the space distortion on the optic flow, there is a, uh, here is a ground truth optic flow. If the scene is shown on the smaller scene, which cause spatial uh, compression, and it, if you compare to the ground through 3D optic flow, we can see that speed of the far objects become slower than they should be. And if the scene is shown on the smaller screen, which causes space expansion, speed of the far objects becomes faster than they should be. 
So far, we confirmed that motion in distorted world induced 3D optic flow distortion. But what does it look like from viewer's perspective? Here I'm presenting the optic flow of the cloud of dot when they are perfectly reproduced without distortion and assuming that the viewer is moving at five meters per second. Now, with 5% undermatched field of view, the stereoscopic 3D space, in this case, the space will be compressed and the dots approaching much faster. However, with a 2% overmatched field of view, the stereoscopic 3D space starts to expanding and some dots are, uh, uh, some dots at certain distance range starting to move backward. With a 5% overmatched field of view, now whole motion seems to be reversed. Reversed, that's a strange thing. Here we need to think about what it means by motion reversal. It means the direction of the self-motion indicated by the stereoscopic 3D cube appears to be in the opposite direction of the viewer's actual self-motion or retinal motion. It can happen when ratio of depth expansion becomes faster than the viewer's forward moving speed. In this case, relative distance to the object appears to increase even though, you, even though the viewer is moving forward. So background is moving farther backward faster than my forward moving. Then in relative point of view, the background, the far object seems to moving backward. That's the uh, motion reversal. In fact, similar depth distortion effect has been used in 2D movie making to create an impression of, the, of vertigo without using the stereo depth cue. It's called dali zoom. Something like this. You can see that the far object seems to moving backward even though the camera is staying in the same position. So it is dramatic motion distortion. But why, don't, why we don't see it? The demo, the cloud, the motion dot cloud was created to show optic flow without any other 2D depth cue, such as occlusion or size expansion. Also, dots appear at random distance at random eccentricity. So they provide no contextual or uh, structural cue. And finally, if the cue conflict between the stereoscopic 3D depth cue and other 2D depth cue are extremely large, stereo depth cue may be suppressed. You can imagine that in a pseudoscopic condition where the left eye view is accidentally shown in the right eye, right eye view is accidentally shown in the left eye, then the 3D cue, 3D, uh, uh, st uh, stereoscopic 3D cue is totally reversed. But people at the beginning feel weird, but later they're starting to suppress the 3D cue and feels normal. And although cue conflict may be resolved by the suppressing one type of a visual cue, but brain needs to put effort. So in summary, parameter mismatches between the image acquisition and display induced the depth size distortion in 3D environment. And self-motion in this kind of distorted 3D environment causing the 3D optic flow distortion. The amount of the optic flow distortion increases as the viewer's moving speed increases, and also the, the amount of mismatches. In some extreme, but within the practical uh, range, optic flow can be reversed. Since this kind of 3D optic flow distortion hardly ever occurs in the real world, we postulate that uh, optic flow distortion in stereoscopic 3D may increase the visually induced motion sickness. It is strange that uh, even watching the 2D, uh, same movie, watching in 3D causing the more motion sickness than the 2D, even though the context is the same. So 
that is my uh, postulation. It is, I think it, it is because such a motion conflict may stress the, our visual system and our brain, even if uh, it not consciously noticed by the observer. So it's, it's the factor. So thank you, that's my talk. <laughs>